What's up guys and gals, this is Roy from Roy's Customs and I'm going to do a little bit of primering today on my car and what I'm going to be using is this Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer. Um, you, you know, uh, you get it at Walmart, five bucks a can, something like that. Um, it's the big can. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. I've had pretty good luck over the years with the Rust-Oleum can primer. Um, I'm going to explain what I'm doing and why. Uh, as I go along but the gist of it is is basically I'm gonna be primering the entire car sanding down the entire car and reprimering it and I'm gonna get it prepped for a little bit of body work there's some filler that needs done there's some body work underneath that needs done still this rocker panel isn't finished I had started it last summer and I never got around to finishing it, but there's going to be a lot of body work that needs done all from front to back and there's a bunch of little uh, nicks, dings, dents, uh, there's several in the roof of the car that uh, every time I walk up to the car they're eye level and I see them. So anyways, I'm going to go over the whole car, I'm going to get it all uh, sanded down, primered, I'm going to look for all the spots and then uh, once I fill the spots in. I'm going to give it another coat of primer all the way around. Um, hopefully by the time I get this all done for the preliminary uh, sanding and priming, um, hopefully I'll have a compressor and a paint gun and I can get some uh, good uh, high build or sandable primer or something. Uh, I'm thinking high build primer. Uh, that way whenever I block it, it'll smooth it out even more. So. Anyways, I'm going to show you what and all I've done today and explain things as I go along. So, stay tuned. Now we'll give that a few minutes so it can dry some and then we'll do another coat. Um, so I went ahead and used this little Rust-Oleum handle thing. I'm, I'm not really prone to using one of these usually but I don't know. I'm getting old I guess. Uh, this one actually works way better than the old fashioned ones did. The older ones they were kind of chintzy and they didn't really work quite as well as this one does. but. Uh, this one seems to work pretty well. Um, like I say, this is actually fast drying, so maybe five, ten minutes and I'll get back to it and I'll do another coat. Um, um, I have a, now that we got that part primered, um, the, the second coat doesn't have to be very thick. Um, All I was really doing was just adding another coat. Um, as you can see, it is kind of blotchy here and there, but like I say, this is just a, a preliminary sort of thing. This is just to go around and, and kind of try to find bad spots. So it, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because this is going to get sanded down again and there's going to be more work on top of this. So by the time it's all done, I'll probably end up having two more layers of primer anyways. So at least what this does is this kind of um, will show me here and there. Um, what's actually going to need done later on. So, like I say, it doesn't have to be completely perfect, but I want to make it halfway decent. So, anyways, I still got the hood to do and the other fender, uh, which 
I, I went ahead and done a little bit. Um, I, I've only got one more piece of sandpaper, so I just did a little bit on that side, and I just sprayed it a little bit. Uh, you know, sprayed a, a small coat over there, uh, which I'll probably go ahead and spray another coat real quick. Um, as you can see, I didn't do a whole lot more than what was already done, but I did do a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and do another quick little coat here. So, there's still a little bit left in this can, so um, it'll probably be enough to finish up this fender, um, but only having one more thing of sandpaper, I don't really think I'm going to be able to sand that all down anyways, but um, anyways, um, just wanted to get started on this, and it was a halfway decent night, day, evening, so I thought I'd go ahead and get started. Um, so, anyways, like I say, um, this is all preliminary. Um, this is just so that, one, I can start seeing what I need to smooth. Like, I got a little chip here that needs to be a little bit of filler, or maybe some uh, high build primer or something should actually do it, and then I'll uh, block it uh, to smooth it out. So, anyways, then I'll have to... See, that's why I'm not worried about going over on any of this stuff. I just don't want it on my headlights or don't want it on none of my windows or nothing. So, that's why I'm taping off, like, the important stuff. I'm not really worried about, like, the bumper and stuff because this is all going to overlap anyways. So, anyhow, um... I'm going to call that it for this video. Um, you got to see me start some of my work. Um, the uh, the Rust-Oleum uh, automotive primer, um, it's actually not usually in the automotive bodywork stuff. Usually it's over by the uh, cans of house paint uh, in the home paint section. Um, and it being the large project size, and it's still like five bucks and you can see all that I did which is quite a bit for this can and there's still I'd say there's probably about that much left so like I say I could probably finish this fender so in order to have enough for two fenders for five bucks eh, it's not too bad I'm okay with that so if I can do two fenders worth with um, one can uh, I think I go around and I get like a can and one package of the Gator Grit. Uh, just go through it a little bit every week. That way I'm not spending everything I got and I can get this done little by little. Um, the hood is going to be kind of the hardest part to do because um, it does have the heavier um, clear coat on it. So it's going to be a little bit harder to sand off. Um, it did do really well. Uh, I was okay with the way it's performed. I've had it on there like a year. Hasn't been any cracking or anything. I did mess up this spot, but that was my fault. But uh, anyways, um, mostly the reason I did this hood before was to check the durability and check how it handled the sun and stuff. And uh, it did quite well for like a year or whatever, however long it was on there. I can't remember. I think it was about a year. So, anyways, um, I was pretty impressed with that. Uh, so, I'll probably use that to clear coat with if I do a base coat clear coat. Um, but, the first thing I'm going to have to do is figure out if I want to take it back to stock color or if I want to change the color completely. And that's always a big a big ordeal to change the color completely because I see it time and time again people will change the color on the outside of the car and leave their door jams and under the trunk and stuff so instead of it just taking one quart to paint it it would take two maybe three quarts because you want to do underneath the trunk underneath the hood maybe inside the trunk a little bit so that it's at least hidden and you know you want to do the door jams and stuff and uh, you know that's that's at least how i would do it that's one of the reasons why i'm thinking about going ahead and keeping it the stock color that way i don't have to fight with the door jams and stuff like that because i could still kind of use my 
my theme. I could just do it like gray and, you know, and black and, and, and you know, and whatever colors I decide to use. Um, I'm probably not going to airbrush anything. If I do, it's probably going to be really small and it probably won't even be on the hood or anything. Um, I just don't know yet, but I am thinking taking it back to the stock collar. So, anyways, that's going to be it for this video. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Um, feel free to subscribe, um, hit the notifications, and uh, have a spectacular day or night, whichever one it is for you. Peace out.